Hallelujah. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. And I'm so glad he did. I don't know why Jesus loved me. I don't know why he even cared. But I'm so glad that he did. Amen. I'm so glad he did. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just have to let your mind go back. We forget sometimes what the Lord has done for us, for our families, amen, for our children, amen. And we just tend to get laxed. Sometimes we have to say, come on, stand up, y'all, praise him. When, when we're praising God, when the worship service is going forth, you should be popping up like popcorn. Thinking about how the Lord has been so good to you. Hallelujah. He said, enter his gates with praise and his gates with thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. So everybody that didn't give him a thank you, let's hear a thank you. Everybody that didn't give him a praise, say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. Amen. God is good. Amen. Right now we're going to change the order of our service. These are the morning's announcements. Next week, uh, starting the first Sunday in September, we're going to have our normal Sunday school at 9.30. Our morning service will start at 11. Amen? And Bible class will be the first Wednesday of the month, and it will be starting at 6. Amen? So we're asking that you come out and be a part of the service and invite someone to come with you. Amen? The women's class will convene this Friday at 6 p.m. First Lady will be the overseer of the class. All sisters come out and enjoy our First Lady, amen, and be helped by her wisdom, amen. Be surprised some of the things she can tell you, amen. So come on out, amen. And all of those that didn't know, our bishop celebrated his 57th birthday this past Friday. Amen. Let's stand up and praise God for our bishop, amen. Hallelujah. We got one of the best. Amen. We got one of the best. Hallelujah. If you don't believe it, go visit other churches. Amen. So he celebrated a, his 57th birthday. Amen. So I believe this is a good year for you, Pastor. It's got a seven in it. Amen. That's God's perfect number. So he's going to have a good year this year. And we're going to help him. We're going to see to it. That he have a good year because we go keep him lifted up in prayer. Amen. Amen. We like to welcome our visitors this morning. Uh, Sister Paige Collins, Brother Peyton Collins, and they're from Greater Calvary Full Gospel Church where their pastor is Bishop uh, Gavin. Amen. Amen. Oh they, left. oh, they had to leave, but they were here. Amen. For Sunday school. So in the near the beginning of the service, amen. We'd also like to welcome Brother Sylvester all the way from Altoona, Pennsylvania. Amen. Amen. That's a sacrifice to drive all that way. Amen. God's going to bless you, bro. Amen. And to all those who we haven't seen in a while, we're so glad to see you. Amen. So glad to see you. Thank you, Jesus. Right now we're going to ask Deacon Fields if he come up and Lift our morning offering, amen? How many know that you can't beat God given? No matter how you try. Oh, and, and don't forget our rice bowl, amen? Mother Davis has our rice bowl, and, and, and if you want to give her something towards that, you can, amen? Amen. She'll be collecting until October 1st, I think it is, right? Amen, October 1st. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you, Lord, for this offering. We're asking, Lord, that you'll bless it in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Asking that you'll stand in your prospective places, and he'll come around to you. Amen. We sing the praises to our King, for he is the King of kings. We sing the praises to our King, for he is the King of kings. We sing the praises to our King, for he is the King of kings. We sing the praises to our King, for he is the King of kings. Give him glory, for he is the King. Give him glory, for he is the King of kings. Give him glory, for he is the king. Give him glory, for he is the king of kings. We sing the praises to our king, for he is the king of kings. We sing the praises to our king, for he is the king of kings. 
our King. For He is the King of Kings. Sing the praises to our King. For He's the King of Kings. Give Him glory. For He is the King. Give Him glory. For He's the King of seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Truly it is good to be back out in the house of the Lord one more time. I can truly say I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we ought to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Praise ye the Lord. And we certainly do praise God for all of our people that are here on today. We thank God for each and every one of you pressing your way. We thank God for those that are listening to us uh, virtually. We praise God for you. We thank God for you. We certainly do praise God and thank God for our lovely wife, Lady Tracy Quinn. Amen. Praise God for her. Thank you, Jesus. She'll be celebrating her 30th wedding anniversary. Come on, give God a praise. <laughs> And I'll be celebrating my 30th wedding anniversary too. Come on, give God a praise. So together we'll celebrate. Amen. 30 years. Thank you, Jesus. And, and, I, and we'll both do it all over again. 
Amen. Thank you, Lord. No regrets. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thank God. I love you, Lady Quinn. I love you. Amen. All right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we certainly do thank God for all the birthday wishes that we had celebrating the 20, uh, 27. <laughs> My Lord. Thank you, Lord. 57. I mean, I had a little senior moment there. 57 years. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We certainly do thank God for that. We certainly do honor Pastor Duck. Amen. We praise God for her, Mother Louise. Thank you, Lord, all of our deacons. We thank God for our media team up there. We thank God for all of you, amen, that have come out, our ushers and our praise team. Thank you, Lord. We certainly do praise God for each and every one of you that are come on out to the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, looking at we're changing the seasons, uh, moving into uh, fall, we're going to uh, open up our uh, go back to our regular uh, worship service. Uh, although um, we're starting the Bible study, uh, the Sunday school at uh, 930. Um, the morning worship will begin at 11, but we won't go to one o'clock. We'll go to 1230. We'll still keep that an hour. Amen. We'll keep that an hour and go to 1230. And then um, I mean, I'm sorry, hour and a half. And then um, our Bible study will begin at 6 o'clock, and we're opening back up for that. Um, and so we'll open the doors so that people can come in um, uh, for the Bible study. I may be a little nervous seeing all the all faces there, you know, but I'll get over it. Because <laughs> I have been doing it virtually here all by myself. And... Um, you know, it's been an experience, uh, to say the least, and I can always feel when Jesus enters into the room or manifests his glory, things change and things get different. I don't know if y'all saw me on camera a couple times. I, I hear some noises and some squeaks. I look over. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And I'd say to myself, Frank, get yourself together, man. Get your <laughs> But you know, we all human. I still... Be looking. Amen. <laughs> the Bible say we, we're entertained by just man's spirits. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So y'all pray. Y'all pray. So uh, we'll continue on with our praise and our worship. And we thank God uh, for each and every one of you. Amen. All right. We won't be before you long on today, but we do have a word from the Lord. We have a word from the Lord. And we want you to turn with us to uh, the book of St. Matthew, St. Matthew chapter number nine, St. Matthew chapter number nine. And if you can all stand with me uh, for the reading of the word of God. And if we can uh, read it in unison, I know that uh, we are still obeying our social distancing and we're all wearing our masks which is great and the church is being sterilized every two weeks on a regular basis everything's sprayed down and wiped down before and after service and we certainly thank god for that amen and uh sister cora said something um when she requested prayer for going back to work which we should always pray and i loved it when she said it Lord, protect us, watch over us, and keep us. Amen. No matter, uh, don't get me wrong, uh, we ought to take precautions. We should do that religiously. And, but we know that our help truly comes from the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So we, we acknowledge the Lord and we trust in him. Amen. Now, don't get me wrong. The Lord wants you to be have sense. Don't tempt him. <laughs> Amen. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Be safe. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But we ultimately know that our help cometh from the Lord. And uh, that should be our prayer at all times. Amen. So as we look at St. Matthew, chapter number 9 and verse 35. St. Matthew, chapter number 9. And birth, 
verse 35. We thank God for uh, Brother Mikhail being in our midst on today. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for him. Um, it's like I haven't missed him because I watch him all the time doing his YouTube exercises. And got his crew and his clan out there. So I watch him on a regular basis. <laughs> you know, so it's like I'm always with you. <laughs> so we thank God. Maybe um, uh, eventually you can do some uh, be our trainer here at Christian Ministries. Amen. Amen. I see you got them young boys out there doing what they need to do. Amen. Amen. All right. I didn't get a lot of amens on that. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, Jesus. We'll help send you to some, uh, get your degree. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We will pray for you. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm sowing seed right now. I'm sowing seed. He probably already thought about it. The Lord confirming it up in here. <laughs> hey, glory. Yes. Amen. By any means necessary. Amen. Pastor Sir Duck say bringing souls in. Matthew chapter number nine and verse 35. And the scripture says, uh, let us read it together. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as a sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly thank you for this word on today. We ask you, Lord, that you'll manifest your glory, manifest your purpose, manifest your will into our hearts on today. We ask you, Lord, that you strengthen us, give us what we need for this hour, feed our souls, heal us, deliver us, strengthen our hearts and our minds. As we stand here praying, we stand also forgiving all those that have trespassed against us. Uh, Lord, we ask you to forgive us of all of our trespasses. And we ask you, Lord, that you strengthen us and let your blood cover us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, I want to take for a thought on this morning uh, from that uh, 37th verse. It says, then saith he unto his disciples. The harvest truly is plenteous. The harvest is abundant. The harvest is plenteous. But the laborers are few. And uh, I want to take for a thought saying that it's harvest time. It's harvest time. And uh, I'm intrigued by verse 38, which also says, pray ye. Jesus desired them to pray. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest. Pray unto the heavenly father. He's the Lord of the harvest. That he would send forth laborers into his harvest. That he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Pray to God that he would send forth laborers, workers, into his harvest. As we begin to uh, particularly study this verses of Scripture, uh, we see that in that 35th verse, Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom in healing every sickness 
and every disease among the people. We see Jesus uh, is literally the one who is bringing everything together. He's literally here described as a traveling preacher, a traveling evangelist. And he taught and he preached uh, none other than the message of the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And as he went about preaching and as he went about teaching, he was also demonstrating the power of the gospel, the power of the kingdom of God by literally healing all those that were sick healing all those that were oppressed of devils and casting out diseases and he was literally showing forth that he himself was the messiah because there was no one else in history that healed like as many as jesus healed there was no one else in history if you search your bible history you'll find out there were no others that controlled spirits like Jesus there was no others that raised the dead like Jesus there was no others that preached and taught that people were amazed at his doctrine because he spoke like never a man ever spoke before he alone was the one that was controlled the wind and the wave that the seas even obeyed him he was doing that to manifest that he is the Messiah. He, he is the Messiah. That They asked him a question one time. They said, show us a sign and we shall believe thee. But if they would just look back over the life of Jesus and looked at what he taught and looked at what he did and, and looked at who he healed and Jesus spoke a word. He was so dynamic and anointed he, the woman with the issue of blood looked at him and said, if I but touch the hem of your garment, I, I can be made whole. If, if I just but touch you, I can be made whole. And a Roman soldier, he was full of power and authority and he desired Jesus to heal his son. And uh, he thought Jesus said, I'll go to your house and heal him. But he said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you come under my roof, but if you just speak the word only. I'm a man under power and authority, and I say this, and they say that, and they go, and they come. Uh, if you just but speak the word, I know my daughter shall be healed. And Jesus said, never in Israel have I ever found so great a faith. Uh, if we just believe in the words of Jesus, if we just trust in the power of the Lord, if we just have confidence in his ministry, if we just have confidence in what the scriptures have said about our Savior, the Bible says that Jesus, that Jesus, he did so many miracles. He did so many signs and wonders that the books uh, couldn't contain it. The, the world couldn't contain the books uh, that were written about Jesus and that what he has done for you. Uh, what Jesus was showing himself because he is anointed uh, to bring about miracles. He is anointed to bring about signs and wonders. So Jesus, if we were to really think about it, he is the greatest missionary that we would ever know. Uh, let me say that again, that Jesus is the greatest missionary that we would ever know because he did many signs. He did many wonders and he healed the sick, he even fed the multitude, not once, but twice, uh, fishes and loaves of bread. And uh, after they had ate, there was many scraps that were taken up, uh, showing that he's more than enough. Uh, how many of you know Jesus is more than enough? If we really would look at the gospel of Jesus Christ and what he has done for you and I and his lifestyle that he led, he's a living testimony uh, that all power in heaven and earth 
has been given unto him. He's a living testimony that if you're ever hungry, he can feed you. Uh, if you're ever looking for a miracle, he can heal you. Oh my God, if you're ever looking for uh, the spirits of the evil powers ever come upon you, Jesus can speak a word. And those devils would surrender uh, because they said, Lord, why have you come to persecute us before the time? And Jesus said, shut up. Hallelujah. And he told those spirits to come out of them. Uh, why? Because they recognized his authority. They recognized his power. They recognized who he is. Uh, my God, brothers and sisters, we ought to recognize his authority. We ought to recognize his power we ought to recognize that the anointing uh, that is upon Jesus is life uh, Jesus said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed huh? how many of you know Jesus is anointed Jesus is anointed to preach that gospel uh, to the poor, those that see themselves in need. I don't know about you, but I see myself in need. I, I see myself in need of a savior. I see myself in need of a deliverer. I see myself in need of help. Uh, and the Bible says that the Lord is our help. Uh, how many of you know that the Lord is your help? Uh, you can search the world all wide over, but you'll find nobody worthy, nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus because he's anointed. Uh, he's anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. He's anointed to heal your broken heart. Uh, the greatest missionary. Have you ever had a broken heart? Uh, have you ever been through situations that you can't control? But, but Jesus is able. Uh, he's able to heal your broken heart. He's able to fix your broken mind. He, he's able to speak peace to you in your midnight hour. He's able to speak peace to your storm. He, he's able to give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. My God, a lot of people look around in life trying to find different things. But uh, until you find Jesus, uh, who the Bible says is that lily of the valley, he's that bright and morning star he's that rose of Sharon he he is our joy in sorrow and he's our hope for tomorrow I don't know about you but I need Jesus I need Jesus every day I need his strength I, I need his power I, I need his comforting words I, I need him to speak to me in my midnight hours to tell me that everything not just some things but everything is going to be all right oh i'm loving i'm loving upon jesus because he first loved me and as pastor duck was trying to tell us that that jesus paid the sacrifice uh, he gave it all for you and i he laid down his life as a ransom and he gave himself uh, knowing that he would die on the cross uh, for our sins. The Bible says that he was wounded for our transgressions. Uh, he was bruised for our iniquities. Uh, the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, but with his stripes, uh, uh, you can claim healing. You, you can claim deliverance. Uh, you can claim power. Oh, my God, brothers and sisters, it makes me wonder. It makes me wonder sometimes why people walk around sad, why people walk around un, un, unvictorious. You know, the answer to the question is, is that they haven't put fully their confidence in the Lord. Because when you put your trust in Jesus, when you put your hope in Jesus, he'll tell you that everything is going to be all right. Because we serve a Savior that can be touched with the feelings of your infirmities. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your thoughts from a far off. That's what makes him the greatest, the greatest missionary ever. Because if you think about a missionary, they're there to supply me. 
Oh, my God, in Jesus, he's able to supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. He's able to supply whatever you need. That's why you should come to Jesus with your needs and with your desires. And if you turn your life over to him, oh my God, there'll be a change. Somebody say great change. Somebody say great change. Oh, I came to Jesus just as I was. I was wounded, born, and sad. But I found in him I said I found in him do I have any witnesses in the house that I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad oh my God the joy that I have the joy that you have the world didn't give it and the world can't take it the world can't take it away so when we're looking at the scriptures here about Jesus and his ministry he went about to the synagogues in the roundabout place Jerusalem and Galilee he begins to preach he begins to teach and he begins to heal he begins to speak words that have never been spoken before but there was in the midst of him some opposition every time he would do good evil is always going to be present every time that you seek to stir up the name of Jesus the devils are going to try to stop you they're going to try to block you but Jesus somebody say Jesus oh but Jesus he realized his purpose as that those that would come up against him, they could do nothing with him. You've got to realize that you got some haters. You've got some people that are going to come up against you when you're promoting the name of Jesus, but they can't do nothing with you. Oh, they can't stop you because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. When you confess with your words uh, that the Lord is my light. Uh, the Lord is my salvation. Uh, whom shall I fear? Uh, that the Lord is the strength of my life. Uh, if the Lord the strength of your life, uh, then whom shall you be afraid? Uh, let them talk. Uh, oh my God, but the Lord has your back. Uh, let them say what they want to say, uh, but the Lord who is on our side He's able to do exceeding. You ought to clap your hands and give God a praise. You can say what you will, but God is the say. You can do what you want to do, but God. Somebody say, but God. Oh, my God. Oh, please be seated in this heavenly place. Even you're sitting right now because the Christ that Christ prayed. You're sitting right now in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You're sitting in a heavenly place. Even now, you can call on the Lord and he'll heal you. Even now, you can speak to your mountain and your mountain can be moved. Even now, you can say, Lord, for you I live and for you I die. And he'll show up. He'll show up in your finances. Oh, my God. We can't put the Lord on a time limit or a time schedule. He's now. He's here willing to bless you. Oh, my God. Reach out and grab it. Reach out and touch it. Whatever you need, just call on the name of the Lord. If you need healing, raise your hand. If you need finances, raise your hand. If you want to get saved, see your loved ones saved, raise your hand. 
You ought to praise. You ought to praise. You ought to praise. Oh, God. I feel a troubling in the waters. I feel an anointing in the place. I feel yokes being destroyed. I feel glory. Shabbatah. I feel glory in the house. You ought to clap your hands and give God, give God a praise. Oh my God, I thank God that we walk by faith and not by sight. No, that we walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, clap your hands, oh ye people. And give uh, your God a praise. Uh, Though the enemy uh, wants to come up against us uh, like a flood. uh, But the Spirit of the Lord. uh, Somebody say the Spirit. uh, The Spirit of the Lord uh, will lift up a standard uh, against him. Uh, Oh my God. uh, I've got to get to the text. Uh, I've got to get to this word. uh, But I feel a praise. Uh, I feel a praise uh, down on the inside. Uh, Do you feel it in the atmosphere? Uh, Do you feel glory in the atmosphere? Uh, Do you feel the anointing uh, in the atmosphere? Uh, Do you feel the miracle worker uh, in the atmosphere? Uh, You ought to give your God a praise. Uh, Oh, yes. Uh, Give him a praise. Oh, so you see Jesus uh, in his missionary travels, uh, he saw as he healed, uh, he saw as he delivered. He saw as he preached those, oh my God, that were going through. And he saw the need of the people. The Bible says that as Jesus was going about the cities, as he was going about the synagogues preaching, he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He was healing the sick. He was causing those to be healed uh, that had diseases, uh, oh, that were among the people. Uh, And in his travels, uh, the Bible says that he saw the multitude. uh, And when he saw the multitudes coming, uh, the scripture says that he was moved with compassion. Uh, Oh, my God, my Savior, uh, he's full of compassion. Uh, Compassion means that you see a person in need and then you want to help them in their time of need. You see a lot of people see people in need and they turn their back on them. They say go, I'm going to pray for you that you be warmed and you be filled. But that's not compassion. Compassion is that you see a need and you use your resources to take Take care of the need because you love the individual. You see, Jesus loved us. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him uh, he should not perish uh, but have everlasting life. You see, that's compassion. That you're willing to make the sacrifice you're willing to give it all uh, so that the other person uh, can be made whole. Uh, And that's what Jesus saw in his ministry. That's what Jesus saw uh, as he moved and traveled about. Uh, He traveled about uh, seeing the needs of the people. uh, And he was moved with compassion. Uh, That's what caused him uh, to feed the multitude. Only those fishes and two loaves of bread. He was preaching to them all night. He was preaching to them all day. Oh, what to God that we sit under Jesus' feet all 
day and all night. Would to God that we lay aside all of our thoughts just to be in the presence of Jesus. Oh my God. So Jesus said that I don't want to send them the way fasting, least they faint in the way. So their need uh, caused a miracle to happen. Oh, uh, uh, y'all catch that on your way home. Uh, your needs uh, will cause a miracle uh, to happen. Uh, if you got a need, uh, you should get ready for your miracle. Uh, if you got a need, uh, you should get ready. Uh, oh, I hear T.D. Jake saying, uh, get ready, get ready, get ready. Uh, whatever your need is uh, the Lord of hosts uh, he said I shall supply uh, all your needs uh, oh you don't have to go uh, uh, hither and thither uh, you can come boldly uh, to the throne of grace uh, and he will uh, supply your need uh, so Jesus uh, as he was preaching uh, as he was teaching uh, he saw the people uh, in need and was moved oh my god that's so robust that's so rich oh Jesus is so concerned about you that he's moved when you have a need he's moved when your condition doesn't meet the standards he's moved oh my god and he wants to reach out and help you he doesn't want to talk about you he doesn't want to cast you down he doesn't want to get rid of you he wants to help you he said come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I I will give thee rest. Oh my God. If you got a need and your burden seems to be too great for you to bear, you ought to come to the burden bearer, to the heavy load sharer, and cast all your cares, cast all your needs upon Jesus. My God. I feel them in this place. Oh Lord. Help us in this place. Oh Lord, let your word sink in this place. Let your word find lodging in my heart in this place. Oh God, send forth an anointing to break up this fallow ground. Send forth an anointing. Oh, that the people may hear and understand that you are the Savior. That you you are the deliverer, that you are the king of kings, that you are the Lord of lords, that you are a very present help in the time of trouble, that you deserve all of my worship that you deserve all of my praise that you should deserve all of my thank you you got to give God a praise oh God I got to get out of here my brothers and sisters my sisters and brothers you know Jesus the Bible said that he could not do many miracles because of the unbelief you got to put your trust and Jesus and believe him if you want to see a miracle in your life just believe just have belief and faith as the grain of a mustard seed and all things will become possible if you just believe I hear the Lord saying that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen are you looking for a miracle are you expecting the impossible do you have faith to believe that Jesus he can do it that Jesus he can do it tell your neighbor that Jesus he can do it yeah Lord
out. Well, brothers and sisters, we see here in the scriptures. I know I've over preached my time, but the Lord, he wants to break up this fallow ground so that we can receive his word. You've got to realize that, Lord, in thee I live, in thee I move, and in thee I have my being. Oh, Lord, it doesn't matter what happens to me. you got to come to the point and say, Lord, it doesn't matter what happens to me as long in the end you say, well done. Thy good and faithful servant, into ye in the joy of the Lord. How many of you know that's right? You ought to clap your hands and give God, give your God a praise. Well, we see here in our scripture, this is my first conclusion. Oh Lord, we see that Jesus is having compassion on those that needed healing. He had compassion on those that were sick and he called his disciples and he told him he saw the multitude. He said, Lord, you see these people? They are weak. They are weak in having no shepherds. Oh, they are weak as one having no shepherd. Well, what Jesus was saying, he was saying that now uh, the foundation is laid and I'm about to give my life to as a ransom. But now I need, I need some laborers. I need some workers that will work with me in my vineyard. I need some people that's going to have the heart of the shepherds that's going to have the heart of Jesus. I need some people to be moved with compassion, uh, see people in need, and willing to lay down their life to help those that are in need. You see, brothers and sisters, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom, oh my God. It's full of blessings, but it's full of sacrifice. You can't have the blessing unless you're willing to make the sacrifice. Oh, my God. Let me say it again. We have down through the years preached only the blessings, but now we have to realize we have to give our as a ransom. We have to give our lives as sacrifice. Jesus told his disciples when they were arguing, when they were disputing, who would be great among them. And Jesus Jesus said, he that would be great among you shall also be your servant. Oh, my God. And they said, Jesus, while we're willing to be baptized with the baptism that you were baptized with, we're able to be that sacrifice. And Jesus asked the question. He said, are you willing? Are you able, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, if you're going to be made whole, are you willing, are you able to be a sacrifice? Are you willing, are you able to help those that are in need? Oh, you ought to clap your hands and give God a praise. You see, when you have it in your mind, Oh, my God, I feel like preaching uh, up in here. You've got to understand. You may say, I don't have much, but I'm connected to him that has much. When Peter and John, when they went to the temple to visit the man, 
uh, that was laying gates uh, at the beautiful temple. Uh, day in and day out, uh, he was there asking for alms. Uh, oh, but Peter uh, and John, uh, they said, uh, silver and gold uh, have I none, uh, but such as I have, uh, give I unto thee. Uh, he said in the name of Jesus. Do you have the name? Do you have the name? Just call on the name. Heaven will lie. Just call on the name. Demons will tremble. Just call on the name. The lame will be sick. The lame will be healed. Call on the name. You'll see miracles happen. Call on the name. It's not about what I have. It's about who I'm connected to. Tell your neighbor, it's not about who I have, but it's who I'm connected to. I'm connected to him that is able to keep you from falling. I'm connected to him that is able to present you faultless. I'm connected to him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think. So Jesus said to his disciples, pray, pray to the Lord of the harvest. Pray to God. He said, pray to God. It struck me. He said, pray to God that he would send laborers into the harvest. What Jesus was literally saying, maybe I shouldn't tell you all this, but he was actually using reverse psychology. He was telling them, you pray for a need and then God, in turn, will equip you to fulfill that need. Y'all don't hear me. If y'all see a need, you begin to pray for the need. God will begin to equip you to fulfill that need. Everything begins with God with prayer. And while you're praying, seeking, and asking, God is able to transform your heart. God is able to move upon you in such a way that he will give you the mind of Christ, that he will give you the spirit of Christ, that he will give you a shepherd's heart, and he will supply that need. So when he makes the supply, <laughs> You go and fulfill the need. Why? Because you've been changed. Why? Because you've been transformed. Why? Because you've been renewed. Oh, my God. Perfect example. Perfect example. In the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah was a cupbearer. Not just a cupbearer. He was cupbearer to the king. God had moved him into position to speak to the king. And Nehemiah had a compassionate heart. He asked about his brothers and his sisters that were taken into captivity, but they were sent back to Jerusalem to rebuild a wall. And he asked those that were travelers when they came into the court where Nehemiah was, say, hey, how's our brothers doing? How's our sisters doing? And the traveler said, they're in a bad shape, man. They're doing bad. The walls are broken down. There's no encouragement. There's no leadership. There's no strength. The people are dying. Oh, Nehemiah was moved, the Bible says, with compassion. He immediately 
fell down on his face, he immediately began to cry out to God and ask God, God, help. God, help. God, help. And the Bible said he fasted and he prayed and he sought after God until his whole countenance and his, his message changed. And he came before the king. And the king said, what's the matter with you? Uh, he was afraid because if you be in the presence of the king with a sad countenance, they'll put you to death. Ah, uh, but somehow, some way he gained some courage. How many of you know we all need some courage? We all need some strength. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is being able to overcome your fear. Oh, my God. We need to overcome some situations. We need to be able to overcome some conditions in our life. We need to be able to stand up, trust in God. Stand up and believe in God. Stand up and let God have his way. That's what Nehemiah did. He let God have his way. He told his petition to the king, and the king supplied all that he needed. And God was with him, and he was able to go. Y'all read the story yourself. He was able to go to Jerusalem and rebuild that wall in record time. Somebody say, rebuild that wall. Rebuild that wall. And when his Sambalat and when his Tobiah, and they all came up to him to try to stop him, he said, why should I come down? I'm doing a good work. When the enemy is trying to pull you down, you say, why should I come down? I'm doing a good work. A good work for the Lord. But you got to pray. Tell your neighbor, you got to pray. You got to pray. People are sick and dying. People need to hear what you hear. People need to experience what you experience. You got to stand up, strut your shoulders, put your head back, and say like Esther said, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going to see the king. Jesus said, pray. My second and final conclusion. Pastor Duck, I can make a laundry list of what's wrong. <laughs> I'm sure y'all can make a laundry list of what's wrong. All I need to do is call Deacon Fields. He'll tell me what's wrong. I could mess with him like that. That's my thing. But I'm serious too. <laughs> what we need to do is start praying that the Lord will send helpers. And then what the Lord will do in turn, he'll supply you. I'm not using psychology on you. <laughs> he'll supply you with the need. He'll change your heart. He'll bless you. He'll bless you to supply the need. Jesus said, the harvest is plenteous. You can look around you and see that the harvest is plenteous. You don't have to go but out your front door. Ah, you ain't got to do but turn on the TV. Sometimes you ain't got to do but look around your own house. Whew. And see the harvest is plenteous. You pray. You pray. Lord, send laborers. Lord will begin to transform you. The Lord will begin to supply you. And you'll be able to be his representative to meet the need. 
How many of y'all want want to meet needs? All right, y'all being honest. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Not everybody want to meet a need. So you got to ask yourself, is this all about me, myself, and I? <laughs> you got to ask yourself that. Is this all about me? Or is this about Jesus? Is this all about what I could get? Huh? We got to ask ourselves that. You know, sometimes, sometimes we develop the welfare mentality that, <laughs> you know, you can have 20 turkeys in your refrigerator. But you hear the Salvation Army and the city mission is giving out turkeys. So you say, oh, that's my time. And I'm on my way. You don't really need it, but you got the mentality of this is my blessing. Never saying to yourself, man, I got these 20 turkeys in my refrigerator. Let me be a blessing to somebody else. Let me make room for somebody else. And then, if you be faithful over a few things, if you be faithful over a few things, if you be faithful over those 20 turkeys, ah, God will make you ruler of 40 turkeys. You don't want to be like that rich ruler that gathered grain into his barn to the max. And the harvest was coming. And he said, well, I'm going to tear down these barns and dig bigger. You don't want to be like that. You want to be in a place in your heart and your mind that I'm going to be a blessing to others. I'm going to allow God to use me. <laughs> the this, this Shunammite woman was taught that by the prophet Elijah. He was, uh, went to see her. God sent him on a mission. My God, sometimes God will send people to you on a mission to see what your heart is. She said, in the famine, I got a little bit of corn and a little bit of meal. I'm going to eat it, me and my son, and we're going to die. God, somebody say God. God saw her need. He sent the man of God to her. He said, feed me first. <laughs> hey, if you just acknowledge and honor God first. Told her. Feed me first. Go get all your pots. Now, go get all your pots. She got all her pots, and all her pots were full up to the brim with oil. Hallelujah. God is more than enough. God is more than enough. But we have to see ourselves as conduits of God. We have to see ourselves as as missionaries of the Lord. Though I may not of my own resources have a lot, but I'm of the kingdom. You got to see yourself of the kingdom and see yourself as one that, that is working, co-laboring with God to supply the need. People are sick and dying out there. People need to hear the words that are in your mouth. God is, has, has solicited you into his kingdom for such a time as this. For such a time as this. How many turkeys do you got in your refrigerator? <laughs> hey, glory. How, 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 how many? Step out. Believe your God. And when you step out, 
and believe your God, he'll prove himself to you as more than enough. The harvest is truly plenteous. Pray to the Lord of the harvest. Lord, here I am. Send me. Use me, Lord. You may not, this is my fourth conclusion. You may not initially want to go. You may not initially pray in that prayer out of a sincere heart. Oh, but if you start uh, uh, just bringing your heart to God, he'll transform it. He'll renew it. And before you get done, you'll be effectually, fervently praying. And we know that the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Come on and clap your hands and give God a praise. Let us stand to our feet. I know I've gone over my time, but I needed to talk to you today. Hallelujah. I needed to encourage you today. Uh, I need you to call on the name of the Lord today. Hallelujah, because the, the harvest is plenteous. Oh, Jesus is soon to come. Oh, don't let him catch you with your works undone. Those people that you pass by today, just tell them about Jesus. Uh, go get you a card made that tells about salvation and just say, here, just hand it to them. Hallelujah. Tell them something. Text them. Put it on Facebook. Do something. Tell them about Jesus. He's the panacea. He's the one that heals. He's the one that causes those to be Sick to be made whole. The beauty of this message is, and you can read it in your own time when you get home. Read Matthew chapter 9. We preach, I'm sorry, read Matthew chapter number 10. We preached out of chapter number 9, the last and final verses. See what Jesus did with his disciples in chapter number 10. After they prayed. Hallelujah. 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 Ain't that intriguing? That make you want to read it, don't it? <laughs> See what your Lord did to his disciples in chapter number 10. After they prayed this prayer. What he did for them, he'll do for you. Hallelujah. Because he's the same today. Yesterday and forever. Let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we stand here in your presence, Lord, we thank you for this word on today. Lord, we understand that it takes time to masticate your word, to preach your word, to let it go forth the way you desire. Lord, we pray that this word finds lodging in the hearts of the hearers and the doers. And we pray, Lord, that we be transformed, that you would send laborers. We pray, Lord, that you send laborers into your harvest. We pray, Lord, that you bless those that have a mind to work and have a mind to labor. We pray, Lord, that you continue to supply our needs. We pray, Lord, that you grant understanding in this word that we may do all that you have commanded us to do. Lord, we pray that we lay down our life. We give our life as a ransom to you. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you anoint us, that you sanctify us, that you heal us, that you deliver us. Lord, we pray that we understand the doctrine of the kingdom of heaven. We pray, Lord, for baptisms in Jesus' name. We pray for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. We pray, Lord, for renewed strength, for revival. We pray, Lord, that all souls have their needs met by you, that they may glorify you. We pray, Lord, that you allow us to let our light shine before men, that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. We pray, Lord, that you make us the salt, that we fulfill our purpose with influence, that we'll preach your gospel, teach your gospel, live your gospel in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We praise you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord open new doors, new pathways, new horizons for greater success. In Jesus' name, amen.